Hello, my name is Le Flora Dolanui. I am a photographer who focuses on macro photography and artistic editing. This is the first of a multi-part tutorial in which I will show you how to create a dreamy minimalistic edit. In this video, I'm going to show you how I decide which photograph to edit out of a set of photographs. I will also show you some adjustments I make in Lightroom that ensure I am working with the most detailed image I can. Afterwards, I will transfer the image to Photoshop. Once in Photoshop, I will show you one of the things I do in order to make my images compatible with Instagram. So let's get started. After a photo session, I transfer my images into Lightroom Classic on my computer. Then I use specific criteria to narrow down which images I want to edit. Normally, I go through the entire set of images very quickly and remove any image that is clearly out of focus. However, for this particular tutorial, I have already narrowed down the set of images to three. That is, these three right here. I chose these three for a few reasons. The first reason is they are all of the same type of flower. The second reason is I like the composition of each of these images. I will now go through and tell you what I like about the composition for each image. Okay, so let's start with this image. So I like that the foreground and background bouquet elements are framing the primary subject in this photograph. This is the background bouquet, and this is the foreground bouquet, and this is what I consider the primary subject. I like the way these elements are framing the primary subject. I also really like these bouquet balls down here. Okay, so let's move on to the second image. This photograph is already very minimalistic so it should be easy to create a minimalistic edit out of it. I also really like the bouquet created by the blades of grass on either side of what I consider the primary subject. So I consider this the primary subject, and when I'm speaking about the bouquet created by the blades of grass, I'm speaking about these right here. I like the bouquet balls here, and the light coming through here and here. Okay, so let's move on to the final image. The composition of this photograph is completely different than the other two. It is significantly more complex. However, there are tons of things to like about the composition of this photograph. The bouquet in the background is very lovely. And my favorite thing about the composition is that the foreground is composed of three elements. An important composition technique in photography is that of the composition of odds. That is, when you're including subjects in your photograph, an odd number rather than an even number will produce a more interesting and visually pleasing composition. However, because of the complexity of this composition, I'm going to go ahead and reject this one right away. It is just much easier to work with one of the other two images that are already more minimalistic. Now, I also want to do a more thorough quality control test of each of the final candidates. So each photographer needs to define what they consider a quality image for themselves. So for me, what I consider quality is the following. Number one, I want the area of the image that I consider the primary subject to be sufficiently in focus. Number two is I want the background to have little to no grain in it. I do not like working with grainy images. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of the final two candidates and I'm going to manually inspect them for quality. Okay, so let's start with this image right here. Let's first define what the primary subject is. For me, the primary subject is this flower and only this flower. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on that flower and just check how in focus it is. So as you can see, the flower is fairly in focus. However, we are losing focus right here. 
since our primary subject is composed of only this flower, that is actually too much focus loss for me. So I would say that this image actually does not pass the focus test. Now let's look at the background situation to see what the green is like. In this particular image, there's little to no grain in the background, and that's exactly what we want to see. So I'd say this image passes the grain test, but it does not pass the focus test. So once again, let's define our primary subject. I think this image has a more complex primary subject than the last. I would say the primary subject is composed of this flower right here, this flower right here, and this bud right here. As before, we will now zoom into this image and manually inspect how in focus the primary subject is. I think all of the elements that compose our primary subject are sufficiently in focus. There's a tiny bit of focus loss right here. However, since our primary subject is composed of multiple elements, we can use our editing to draw the viewer's eyes towards another part of the primary subject and deflect from this tiny out of focus area. So I would say this image passes the focus test. Now let's zoom into the background and see what the grain situation is. As before, there's little to no grain in the background, and as before, this is ideal. So I would say this image passes both the grain test and the focus test. As a result, we're going to work with this image. Now what we're going to do is discuss some adjustments I make to my images in Lightroom before I transfer them to Photoshop. Before I transfer my photo over to Photoshop, I always make a few adjustments in Lightroom. The adjustments I make in Lightroom are designed to bring out as many details as possible. I want you to be able to see that these adjustments indeed bring out more details, so I'm going to zoom in to the flowers. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the highlights and shadows. Few people realize this, but there are actually a lot of details hidden in our highlights and shadows, and an easy way to bring details into your image is simply to adjust those. So we're going to first adjust our highlights. What we want to do is we want to take the highlight slider and we want to drag it all the way to the left. That will make the value of highlights negative 100. Now, before I do this, I want to tell you to pay attention to this spot right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag the highlight slider to negative 100. So if you notice, some details were brought out up here. So now we're going to bring out the details hidden in the shadows. To bring out the details hidden in the shadows, we do the opposite of what we did with the highlights. That is, instead of dragging the slider all the way to the left, we're going to drag it all the way to the right, setting the value of shadows to positive 100. So in this case, I want you to pay attention to what happens right here when I make this adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and make this adjustment. Now the most noticeable change to what happens when we lift the shadows is that the tones become overall lighter. However, if you are paying attention to what happened right here, you'll notice that we brought out a lot of texture here. Now. Notice the current color profile for this image is Adobe Color. This profile tends to produce vibrant tones. Because of RTX Accelerated AI Powered Raw Details feature that is a part of the NVIDIA GPU installed on this laptop that I'm using, the fine color detail is refined on high resolution raw images, which this one is. So what that means is that the GPU already enhances the details that we can see in the vibrant tones. However, we want to work with as many details as we can, so I'm going to go ahead and change the color profile to one that produces more subtle tones. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to change it from Adobe Color to Adobe Neutral. So we're going to click Browse. Then we're going to select Adobe Neutral. Now we're going to zoom out. As you can see, our final image is much flatter than what we originally started with. However, we have exposed a lot of details. As artists, this is preferable. As artists, we want to have access to as many details as we can. Then we can use our editing to draw the viewer's eyes to the parts of the image that we find important. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened the image up in Photoshop. So the final thing I want to show you is something I do to my image in order to make it compatible with Instagram. So this is an image shot in portrait mode. Instagram dislikes the ratio of images shot in portrait mode. It prefers images shot with a 1 to 1 ratio or a 4 to 5 ratio. In order to deal with this, you always have to either crop your image or expand it if you're dealing with an image shot in portrait mode. So I typically expand my canvas. However, for this canvas, I am just going to crop it. That's because there's actually a lot of space around the primary subject. And if I expanded the canvas, I would draw the viewer's eyes away from the primary subject. And I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm going to choose to crop. So select the crop tool. Make sure the ratio is set to the ratio you want. And in this case, I want four to five. And then select your crop. So I actually like the default crop that they came up with themselves or that Photoshop came up with itself. So I'm just going to press check. And that's it for this video. We're going to now go through our takeaways. So now we're going to discuss our takeaways. So what are the important points in this tutorial that I want you to take away? Well, we covered, albeit briefly, some important compositional techniques. In particular, that is the composition of odds and also using bouquet elements to frame your subject. Secondly, there are lots of details hidden in the highlights and shadows. An easy way to bring out more details in your image is just to expose the details hidden there. To do this, reduce your highlights and lift your shadows. The other place where lots of details are hidden is in your vibrant tones. To fix this, simply change your color profile from the standard one, which tends to produce vibrant tones, to one that produces more subtle tones. Adobe Neutral is a good choice. The final thing I want you to take away from this video is something that does not seem that important, but it actually makes a huge difference. Instagram dislikes the ratio of images shot in portrait mode. It prefers an image with a 1 to 1 ratio or a 4 to 5 ratio. To fix this, you either expand your canvas or you crop it. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned for the other parts of this tutorial. And also subscribe to NVIDIA's channel for more videos like this. Thank you.